Hey guys, Eric with Blue Line Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Your time's important to me. And what we're gonna do in today's time is we're gonna talk chatterbaits. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk the weight, the profile, and the colors that I've found successful for this time of the year. And I think you guys will find them successful too. Caught a lot of nice fish on them, and I know you guys can do the same thing. So stick with me, it's gonna be good. All right, guys, let's get into the different types of chatterbaits. And you know, we're talking chatterbaits. I have the manufacturers that I prefer, but there's a lot of really good ones out there. So whatever it is you like to throw when it comes to a chatterbait or a vibrating jig, bladed jig, whatever it is you'd like to call it, um, that's what you have confidence in. That's what you need to be throwing. Today, we're gonna be concentrating on really the, the weight of the, the, the bait and the colors that I like to throw and why in a particular setting. So for example, we'll start with, this is kind of a classic, but in my opinion, the chartreuse and white, and this is a half ounce chartreuse and white right here. And it's a, it's a Z-Man jackhammer, but uh, I like to throw this chartreuse and white in almost any setting. It's the perfect bait in my mind to start out with. Uh, whether you have clear water, you have off-colored water, stained water, muddy water, um, it is a color, the chartreuse and white, whether it's in a chatterbait or a spinnerbait, it is, it, you know, it gets the job done. So this is pretty much always my starting point, especially if I'm fishing in a lake or an impoundment that I know has shad in it. If it has shad, I'm definitely going chartreuse and white or solid white or solid chartreuse. Uh, like for example, this is uh, one I changed out the skirt on. It just, a, it, this is a classic chatterbait right here. Uh, not a jackhammer, but I, I put this, uh, chartreuse colored skirt on there uh, because it, before it had kind of a spot remover color with the, the white, gray, and black, which is not, that's not a good color, but I, I like more of the solid patterns or just the, the split skirts that are solid like those, for example. Another color that I found to be really, really good uh, somewhere where I know they're feeding on shad um, is this green shad color. So it's just chartreuse and kind of a pearl white. And you can see in there, it's got the uh, kind of that, the the barbed skirting shad pattern. Um, this is one I found that a lot of times when those other colors don't get it, a little bit of a mix of that shad and that chartreuse and white does really well. Uh, you know, this one here, you can see I actually I paired it up with a lot smaller uh, swim bait than is normal and it's a paddle style tail. So uh, we get a little later into spring like we're getting now, not that it's late spring by any stretch of the imagination, but when we get into these water temperatures are starting to rise into the low to mid 60s. Um, I like to scale down the size trailer that I'm using from the big four, four and a half inch trailers to something like this, which is a three inch and it's very thin uh, because I find a lot of the forage that I'm seeing, whether it be the shad or the, the minnows and stuff running the bank or up in those uh, lay downs is a little bit smaller profile. So that's why I'll make the bait as an overall smaller profile. And I'll throw usually a three eighths ounce in this or a half ounce. Um, just like in the other chartreuse, chartreuse and white, uh, those lighter colors, same there, three eighths ounce or a half ounce. And I'll explain a little bit more when I throw those particular weights, uh, depends on what type of structure that I'm fishing. All right, guys. So next, these darker colors we're going to get into. And these, I really, really like when you're fishing that off colored water or you're fishing, uh, muddy water. Uh, this is green pumpkin jackhammer. Uh, this is kind of a green pumpkin gold, a little bit of maroon in there, uh, a thunder cricket, strike king thunder cricket. Both of these are three eighths ounce, but I love throwing these, like I say, when you got a bluegill forage base, uh, maybe red ear or something like that, but a panfish forage base, and you're looking um, at off colored water. Uh, this fish, or I'm sorry, this particular bait here, I caught my biggest fish of last year on, it was uh, seven four, but this, this color has been really, really good to me on bigger fish uh, for some reason. I mean, I catch a lot of quantity I should, on the um, on the lighter colored chatterbaits, but these darker colored ones, especially this green pumpkin, has been extremely hot. Like I know, everybody has ranted and raved about the uh, the rage crawl. Um, I have not done that great on these. I'm not knocking it by any stretch of the imagination. If this is your go-to color, your favorite one, man, more power to you. Because if you have confidence in this bait, that's what you're going to knock them out with. Um, I've caught fish on it. I've just not caught the fish that I've caught on these other colors, like these bluegill hues, uh, compared to these 
this bright orange like this. And of course, another good one that we have is the, uh, the just the good old black and blue. Actually, this one's called Bruised Pumpkin because the back here is, it's hard to tell, I'm sure, on camera here, but it has a, a green pumpkin skirt up front, then black and blue in the back. Uh, this has been a good color for me, too, and that off-colored water uh, or stained to muddy water as well. And I'll go through one more here as far as the bluegill hues go. Uh, this copper color blade, you just won't see much, and this is a bluegill colored skirt. This is one This is one I've made with rip jaw lures. Uh, I make spinnerbaits and jigs, but I started this year making these uh, chatterbaits as well, and this is one I've done pretty darn good on. Uh, this is a half ounce size, but with this copper colored skirt and this bluegill color. And we're going to get into weights here in just a second. All right, guys, now let's get into talking about weights and when and where um, I use the different size weights. You know, a 3 8 ounce and a half ounce are pretty much the two standard sizes that I'll throw. Um, I do have some 3 quarter ounce jackhammers and I do have some lighter quarter ounce jackhammers. But these two, the 3 8 and the half, are my two go to uh, weights that I'll throw. And I'll explain to you why and where. For example, the half ounce is usually what I'll start with. And um, I'll throw those on normally 12 to 14 pound test. And I usually throw P-Line CX. It's a fluorocarbon carded line, co coated line. Sometimes I will throw pure 100% fluorocarbon, and that'll be uh, FC Sniper, uh, 14 pound test. But where I like to throw this, this half inch is whenever I'm, especially fishing flooded timber, because I can use this heavier weight I can kind of bang into that timber uh, more aggressively and it seems to roll off nice. I'll use a wider based trailer so the bait doesn't want to roll over left or right, roll upside down and hook in to that structure. But this half ounce is something I like to throw uh, when I'm throwing into timber, when I'm throwing into rocks and stuff like that. Um, I just seem to have a little more control with this half ounce bait and feel to it. So that's what I'm going to start out with. Now, when we do the, when, when a 3 8 ounce, that's when I'm, a lot of times I'm going to start out with, if I'm fishing a weed line or I'm fishing in weeds and I'm ripping it out, um, I like, it's a little easier for me. I don't have to reel as fast to keep this bait above the weeds, just where I'm nipping the top of them or just above them where it's not really getting down in them too hard unless I'm wanting to really rip it out. But once again, this 3 8 ounce is something it's easier for me to control uh, and keep above the weeds than it is this half ounce. Because a half ounce, I'm going to have to reel it faster normally. Uh, or if I'm using a higher gear ratio reel, um, it's the bait's still going to be moving faster. And a lot of times, I just don't want the bait moving quite that fast. So I will use a lighter weighted bait to be able to stay above the weed line and uh, to be able to stay out of the thick stuff and still work this bait effectively. Hey guys, I was going to mention, if you want more information too on chatterbait trailers and the types that you should be throwing, and I think will help you out as well, I have a video on that. I'll link it down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video today, please consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to smash that bell notification button. Hit the like button. Hit that bell notification button. You'll get notified each time I upload new videos to YouTube. Once again, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And remember, until that next video comes out, Get out there and fish.